Hey guys, welcome to part. Hey guys, welcome to part two. Uh, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna highlight some of the results of the Yang and Callahan study, um, and hopefully this will help as you think about uh, this week's um, short paper assignment uh, dealing with uh, participation, uh, public participation, and whether or not you think it's helpful or harmful. <coughs> excuse me, to a municipal government. Um, so, who promotes involvement? Uh, the study showed that elected officials are the leading proponents of citizen involvement. So, if you have a, a strong city council that believes that citizen involvement is critical to the legitimacy and success of local government, in other words, this transparency um, and, and the issues associated with um, confidence in local government, then um, elected officials are going to be key. Government, and government agencies and citizens were also perceived as enthusiastic in promoting citizen participation. And so government agencies, um, you know, it's going to be uh, incumbent upon the city manager to also promote a sense of volunteerism. Uh, many agencies, I think, just because of the nature of who or what they are, tend to have uh, more volunteers. Uh, not necessarily the volunteers in the sense of, a, you know, the administrative decision-making process, but more volunteerism in the sense of getting people to help out in the community. All right, so I always thought Parks and Recreation had um, a good way to recruit volunteers and seek, in, seek help and, and get people to, to come in and help in the community. Uh, police departments typically do as well whether it's neighborhood watch or some type of citizens patrolling our town program or whatever the case may be, right? Um, so you do have government agencies and cities uh, that also were perceived as enthusiastic in promoting citizen participation, but elected, elected officials were key in, in ensuring that level of, of, of participation. Again, what impedes involvement and, and the researchers uh, highlight this again, uh, citizens don't have time was cited as a number one obstacle. And again, we're not only are we, you could probably apply this not only to volunteerism in general, but you could probably apply it to the um, administrative decision making level of volunteerism as well. Okay, sitting on a board or commission or something to that effect. So citizens don't have time. Uh, citizens potentially promote their own agenda. Uh, citizens just don't trust government. Uh, citizens don't have expertise, depending on um, what level uh, of government they're they're seeking to offer their um, help in in terms of decision making uh, in that administrative process. And agencies don't have enough financial resources because oftentimes, if you have um, a commission or board, there are resources that have to come into play here. And so maybe the local agency or local government doesn't have those resources. Again, obstacles, uh, the authors talk about power struggles, not only power struggles within the city, but power struggles uh, with, with citizens. So again, um, controlling things, all right? Uh, department heads want to control the agenda and elected officials want to control the agenda. And so sometimes those, um, Sometimes they want different outcomes. And so you're going to have obstacles. And so that's a potentially a real issue uh, where there's a conflict there. Uh, to what extent should, um, you know, department heads um, acquiesce and allow citizens to become part of the administrative decision-making process, uh, especially if, for example, they may not, might not have the specific uh, background or skill sets or knowledge in a particular area of local government. So you're going to have these power struggles and the authors talk about this. External stakeholders uh, and the, ops, the authors talk about the, the external stakeholders. We talked about those earlier, whether it be citizens or the media or religious organizations or nonprofits uh, or the media. Um, those type of things. So responsiveness to participatory values, bureaucratic values are more important than external political forces in determining government decisions and outcomes. 
In other words, public managers determine who will participate, how they will participate, and how the values and concerns shared by the public will be incorporated into the decision-making process. So the role of public managers, um, again, this potential power struggle that takes place. So the authors key in on that uh, because public managers will determine who will participate. Some, um, depending on how your city is structured, uh, in some jurisdictions, the council. So for example, planning commissions, if there's five seats and five members on the city council, typically each one gets to select somebody to sit on the planning commission. Same if you have a library board uh, and there's five seats and each member of the city council gets to appoint their representative. Um, so it depends on how you, excuse me, depends on how your city is structured and um, what level of participation uh, the citizens will be um, permitted to have, right? Uh, communities in which elected officials are ranked with respect to pressuring for citizen participation are likely to have greater citizen involvement. So again, we go back to the fact that uh, elected officials are key in the extent to which citizen involvement is going to take place. Uh, elected officials significantly affect how administrative decisions are made, especially regarding government openness, procedural fairness, and involvement in strategic decision making. Okay, so council, your council is going to be the one that's going to determine the level of responsiveness in terms of external stakeholders. What role are some of these organizations and stakeholders going to play in the overall administrative decision? decisions that have to be made within local government. Um, so uh, those again are going to be critical. Uh, it could be a matter, for example, where local government uh, has received funding to assist uh, with homelessness. And then you're, going, you're probably going to have nonprofits involved and you're going to have maybe some business leaders involved. And so, you know, how are you going to get these people together uh, is going to be critical and elected officials are going to have a key say in, in how this uh, group is going to be uh, structured because they may want to be the ones to decide who sits on these specific boards and the level of citizen participation. So again, we talked about nonprofits managers um, in terms of their role as stakeholders. Um, Responsive to administrative, administrative practicality, uh, you're dealing here with administrators, lack of time, lack of administrative resources, citizens, lack of time. So from an administrative standpoint, um, this is how those individuals might argue that um, they don't have time to allocate towards this level of uh, decision-making process at the administrative level. Now, in this study, they identified, the authors identified uh, by respondents as major promoters of citizen involvement, and the regression results suggest that pressure does, does make a difference in the use of citizen input in strategic decision making. In other words, communities in which nonprofits are ranked high with respect to pressure for citizen participation are more likely to offer opportunities for citizen involvement in the strategic making the strategic decision making. So in this particular case, um, and you're looking at stakeholders, um, nonprofits are a group that can be very influential uh, to pressure for citizen participation in some areas of local government. And I think part of it is because nonprofits uh, deal with all type of issues. Again, homelessness, uh, uh, feeding people, uh, whatever the case may be, even in your community, uh, you can evaluate what your nonprofit organizations do, uh, but they're very influential in terms of being able to uh, pressure for more citizen involvement, specific, specifically if it's dealing with issues that are related to the nonprofit organization. And I think right now you can see, you can probably see a lot of that in the homeless crisis and how different cities are trying to evaluate how best to proceed uh, citizens have the money, I'm sorry, the government has the money, but they need partners 
to make everything come together. And typically, those are going to be some nonprofits. Your nonprofits are going to put together homeless shelters. Your nonprofits are going to put together food banks. Your nonprofits are going to put together areas where homeless can get meals on a regular basis or, or uh, take showers or something along those lines. So there is that partnership. So a nonprofits may have a stronger voice in terms of the level of citizen participation that's going to take place. Uh, in concluding, in the authors in their conclusion section, they talk, they state the council manager form of government had a positive impact on the use of involvement mechanism, volunteer programs, but a negative impact on the use of citizen input in strategic decision making. So in other words, the council manager former government, you, you found that there was a positive relationship between the number of volunteer programs. Now remember, volunteer programs are different than using citizens as part of the strategic decision making process. Okay, and again, whether it's a focus group or whether it's going to be part of a budget committee, a citizen budget committee, or whether it's going to be part of a planning commission, uh, or a board, whatever the case may be, uh, the council form of government had a strong impact on the involvement mechanism. In other words, let's promote people getting involved in some activities within the community, but not so much a positive impact on citizen input and strategic decision making. In other words, they're, they're, they were less consulted uh, in terms of the processes used for the uh, uh, overall administrative decision making that takes place within the city. Um, although public managers and local governments have significant control over administrative processes and outcomes, their attitudes and actions can be influenced by the expectations and pressures of important external stakeholders. So external stakeholders can be influential in persuading the city manager or other uh, local official um, to engage or have more external stakeholders involved in some of the decision-making processes, right? Um, and this week, I think I also posted an article, a news article from Seattle in terms of these public meetings in which people get to see uh, potential development and, and offer their um, input as part of the decision-making process and determining whether or not such a, process, such a um, project should go through. So um, there are those uh, that, are using um, citizens as a means to um, help in some of the decision-making processes that occur uh, by having meetings and providing input uh, to the city. I think nowadays with the level of uh, computerization, much of this can be put on websites and people can have a voice to say without necessarily having to attend meetings, okay? Uh, public managers will respond more positively to important groups such as elected officials, uh, the business community, and nonprofit organizations because of the per perceived power and legitimacy of their relationship with the administration. Okay, so people such as police chiefs, fire chiefs, city managers, will you know they'll look more positively at groups uh, such as elected officials. Again, our legislative bodies, city councils. Business community has considerable sway uh, and nonprofits, as we just learned previously, has some significant sway in terms of this idea of incorporating citizens as part of the administrative decision making process, or at least incorporate as part of the decision making uh, within a community. Results suggest that although barriers such as lack of expertise on the part of citizens may may hinder citizen involvement in strategic decisions. Administrators may proactively respond to some participation barriers by providing more participation opportunities and support. The public managers cited citizen constraints as bigger impediments to meaningful participation. This study demonstrates that administrative lack of time is the biggest barrier. In other words, um, city workers and leaders don't have sufficient time to um, you know, monitor and, and help guide uh, local citizens that are involved in some level of the uh, administrative decision-making process. Okay, so again, this week you're looking at that short paper um, and you're basically going to evaluate whether or not public participation is helpful or harmful and in part you need to reference this article. So make sure you read the article and reference the article as part of your research. Okay. Thanks, guys. I hope this helped, and I'll see you in Brightspace.